HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we take a look at the High School Honors Art Exhibit at the Center for the Arts. A very well-known local hot dog stand has opened for the season, and I caught up with head coach Jay Golden for a preview of this year's Hillers baseball squad. But first, the Board of Selectmen approved the Elementary School Building Committee's recommendation of the Irvine site on Hayden Row for the new elementary school. After many meetings, public forums and workshops, the Elementary School Building Committee voted unanimously to recommend the Irvine site as the option for the new elementary school. At the community workshop in November, we uh, got input that helped us develop a set of criteria. Uh, some of the things that weighed heavily were uh, uh, a space that offered room for future growth, uh, uh, a site that had minimal disruption to education during construction, um, and uh, traffic and you know th a whole set of criteria. We reviewed those criteria and evaluated sites with the community at a workshop in January, and then again came back with additional detail and data on those sites uh, at a workshop we had uh, just a few weeks ago on uh, March 28th. And uh, based on all that feedback and based on our own analysis that we had from uh, the uh, design firm DRA and our project manager and that we collected through the process, uh, you know, again, I think that some of the criteria that weighed heavily were, were uh, when looking at the Irvine site, uh, it had a lot of same advantages as the Todara site. It's on a main uh, thoroughfare near the existing schools. Uh, it has room for future expansion. Uh, uh, it has some advantages over, uh, over center school in that if you construct there, you're not disrupting education at center school during the process. Uh, it has, uh, the Irvine site in particular has a uh, nice kind of placement from the road. It's a wide site along the road and deep enough as well but it's configured in a way that you could build a school that would be fairly visible from the road and could be built uh, close to existing town property at EMC Park. Uh, so for those reasons, uh, we, we felt it was the best uh, site to build the school. The Board of Selectmen praised the effort of the ESBC. They were pleased with the process as well as the vigorous research on all the possible sites. The school committee, followed by the selectmen, voted unanimously to endorse the ESBC's recommendation of the Irvine site for the new elementary school. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That passes unanimously. For more information on the elementary school building committee site recommendation, head to HopkintonSchoolProject.com. The 300th anniversary committee was in attendance at the last Board of Selectmen meeting as the first Hopkinton baby born in 2015 was welcomed by the Selectmen. Uh, the next agenda is the first baby born bond presentation. Say that three times fast. As part of the town's 300th annual celebration, the Board will award a bond to the first born baby of 2015 in town. Here is the chair of our 300th anniversary committee to have the conversation. Thank you. Um, yes, so we had hoped to do this at the opening ceremony, but we were waiting to be very sure that we have the first official baby born in our new century in Hopkinton. So I want to introduce you to Lila Hendrick and her parents. Come on over. And uh, she's been so, so good. She's a little hungry now, but she's so <laughs> sweet. So she was born on the 8th, so we were actually a little surprised that she was the first being uh, eight days in, but... 
Here she is, three months old already. And, uh, Cute as a button. And she, she has two brothers, two big brothers, yep. who are four and six. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's very exciting. She's our first official resident, and if I had thought about it, I would have invited our oldest resident to come back because he really is quite a charmer. Still and, a show. Uh, um, stole the show. So hopefully they can meet at some point soon. So we wanted to <laughs> officially present her with um, a donation to her college fund for being our first official baby of our new century and just a little uh, cute little thing that she can put <laughs> in, in the spring when it's warmer. <laughs> so thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for coming. No problem. Congratulations to Mark and Nina, and welcome to Hopkinton, Lila. Just over a month ago, Kalela's supermarket closed their doors, and a few weeks after that, Crosspoint Associates of Waltham purchased the property. With the property changing hands, this put the future of the well-known and locally owned Snappy Dogs hot dog stand in jeopardy. Just a couple of weeks before they were due to open, owners Lisa and Teresa received word that for the time being, they can open in their usual spot, the Colella's parking lot. Last week, they had their first day, and a great turnout was on hand. Despite Colella's closing, at least for right now, Snappy Dog's hot dog stand is back in their original spot. Owners and operators of the stand, Lisa Volpe Hatchie and Teresa Boyce, were grateful to stay in the same place, and on opening day, they were packed with customers. It was a great opening. It was excellent. Somebody counted 50 people in line and then stopped counting. <laughs> and he drove by and he says, I'll come back another time. <laughs> and he did. He came back when I was in Shire. But crazy, crazy day. I think people were rooting for us today. The ladies of Snappy Dog said they had a rough winter. But now that spring is here, things are getting better. I put on 10 pounds. I put on 15. <laughs> yeah, we were worried. But this week I lost five of it. <laughs> this morning, I think you said oh, you did. Oh, my word. Yeah. Um, so. It was rough. It, yeah, but actually we just found out last Monday that we were able to stay here. We were heading up to Western Nurseries as of last Monday. So, thank you to. Dale. Dale, definitely. And, and to Cross Point Associates for yeah, those, letting us they're the use new their property lot. manager, mm -hmm. so they're letting our customers use the parking lot. And to um, Western Nurseries, Peter Mezzet, and to Angel uh, Garden, that's Jeff Doherty, for offering us a spot on his And also. St. John's Church and for the St. use of their <laughs> kitchen. Oh. So yeah. we have a lot of people that were really great to us. So, and then it showed today with the crowds. Oh We're exhausted. <laughs> so, so, what's take your hope for, uh, so, so, what's your hope for this coming season? Oh, have many days like this. That would be good. Good weather um, to increase our customer base. Mm -hmm. uh, to get the orders right. We were really off today. We can't just walk down 50 yards to get more rolls and hot dogs when we run out. So it's a half an hour round trip. So we really have to be spot on. And we weren't we were today. Not. We thank goodness we had my daughter and Teresa's sister to help, uh, and my son to help do the running today. And um, yep. it's, it's gonna be we just the to. two of us. We better figure this out. <laughs> We're going to be open until 3.30, um, Monday to Saturday, so we've increased our uh, our day by half an hour in hopes of getting the kids from center school, uh, the parents that told us they could never get here on time because their kids were just getting out of school, so um, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 3.30. Coming up later in the newscast, we will talk to some of the artists involved in the Hopkinton High School Honors Art Show at the Center for the Arts. But first, visual art instructor Colleen Giannino and HCA Executive Director Kelly Grill give you a taste of what to expect at the exhibit. The 11 students in the show are a very um, amazing group of 11th and 12th graders from the high school, and they're a group of really um, 
I would say prestigious students who have taken art very seriously throughout their years at the high school. It's taken over a week for the students to set the show up. They've worked for months now with their advisor, Sterling Morell, and with their teachers, Chris Kellenberger and Ann Rainey, to get their work ready and matted and mounted and labeled. Um, it's really impressive. They're such detail. The pen and ink work of Lauren Hazard is just amazing. The cut paper work of Victoria Feng is incredible. Um, I encourage any community members to come out and see this show. It's been on display. We've been doing this now for over 12 years, and this particular show is up till um, about the end of April. We marvel at the work every year. These students are just exceptionally talented, and it's just wonderful to have them all here in the center. It's definitely one of the biggest shows, and I, we can't say enough about the talent. We're just so amazed at the fact that these are, you know, I hate to say just, but just high school students, and the talent is it's exceptional and the fact that they are proficient in so many different mediums and, and uh, it's really wonderful. We love, love having them here every year. Still to come on HCAM News, Hiller's baseball head coach Jay Golden talks about the upcoming season. You will hear from several artists involved in the High School Honors Art Show and Courtney will have our HCAM Insider. More HCAM News on the way. Stay tuned. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time, just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. Currently on display at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts is the artwork of students from Hopkinton High School who were selected by instructors and peers to have their work displayed as part of the Hopkinton High School Honors Art Exhibit. The display will be open to the public at the Center for the Arts until April 25th. I had the chance to meet several of the artists at the opening reception. It was an absolutely packed house at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts for the Hopkinton High School Honors Art Exhibit opening reception. The students showed off the artwork to family and friends. HCAM News was on the scene. Well, every student picks a focus that they're going to base all their work on throughout the year. And mine has been illustration and showing a story through your work. So I've been revolving around that through the year. Well, we have a lot of freedom in the ceramics room, and uh, just last year I started throwing on the wheel, and uh, steadily I built larger and larger, and with a lot, a lot of practice and failures, um, I was combining large pots, and um, that's what a lot of my work is, is taller vases. Um, I got into carving with the tools on them as well, and making different kinds of patterns, and just being able to experiment was a really liberating feeling. So. Last year I made an uh, anatomically correct human heart, which I was really proud of. I think that's probably the piece I'm most proud of. I have t uh, 10 pieces here and most of them are part of my um, AP concentration. And so for that I had to cr create things that were, um, they all had a consecutive theme. So I chose hands because I thought those were difficult to draw, I wanted to challenge myself. But then I also thought they could um, tell a story sometimes about people, like some of mine are um, a little deeper in the meaning and some of them aren't as deeper, like I have some more graphic ones too. I, th I think I have two favorites. Um, one of them is a picture, actually it's made in oil uh, pastel of my brother playing guitar. I really like that one and also I have one that's um, it's called Dream and it's of three um, pen and ink hands uh, painting like a sky of purple. Um, a lot of my pieces have to do with identity and the positive and negative things that influence someone's identity and um, influences who they are. Um, one of my favorite pieces is my mixed media piece called Sea of Apps. It was on the postcard. Um, it's about technology and um, the positive and negative things that technology can do for us. Um, I think it's important for us to recognize the positive and negative factors that technology has in our life and the way that it affects our communication. Um, I have a piece that I've been working on for months and it was the one that was white with dots on it and it had flowers on it. Um, that's probably my favorite piece that I have in here because um, 
it was really hard to make and I took flowers individually and sculpted them and yeah, it was my favorite. Ceramics is definitely one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> props to people that can draw because honestly, like, I don't have any idea how to draw pieces. I like sculpting. Uh, well, I have this piece, which is a um, linoleum print of Paris and Bordeaux, two cities in France. I have um, four pieces in here. I do a lot of pen and ink artwork, and I have one oil painting. My favorite is probably one I did of my dog. It's called Gracie, and it's um, pen and ink with watercolor. I experimented a lot with materials recently. Um, I'm actually an Art 5, so I had a lot of room to just try different materials I've never worked with before. I tried oil pastels and pencil, and I'm more comfortable with watercolor, and that was a big step for me, which actually led to my most favorite piece, um, my Take 5, two ballerinas sitting together. They're in oil pastels, and I'm very happy with the growth I've had in that material. I started art classes when I was five years old at Worcester Art Museum, and I continued to take water classes, watercolor classes after school um, when I was 10, 11, 12, up to freshman year, and now I'm in all the art classes at Hopkinton High. The art show started about, um, I don't know, probably six or eight years ago, and I just thought back to when I was an art student and the first opportunity I had to see my artwork up on a wall somewhere. And I remember like what a special moment that was for me. And so that's what made me contact the HCA and I said, you know, can we have a show of select art students so they can experience that same thing, of seeing their artwork up on a wall, having an opening like, you know, um, professional artists. And so that's how this whole thing started. So each year, the teachers select six, eight, ten standout art students to put into the show. The title is called Honors Student Show, but they're not, we don't have like an official honors level, or they're not designated honors by the school, but they're sort of designated honors by us. And so we select the, the best students from all of our classes and put them in this show that's just called the Honors Exhibit. A lot of talented artists on display for the Honors Art Exhibit. Speaking of talent, the Hillers baseball team has been getting ready for the season. The fields might not be ready quite yet, but that has not stopped the Hillers baseball team from getting in some good practice hours. I caught up with head coach Jay Golden during a Hillers baseball practice in the high school athletic center. The Hopkinton Hillers baseball team spent the first few weeks of their season practicing in the high school athletic center. Most of the snow has been cleared off the baseball fields using green sand, but still it's a bit too flooded to practice outside. Head coach Jay Golden says the team has made the most of it. All right, coach, so uh, you guys are finally practicing. Unfortunately, uh, not outside yet. Now, the weather certainly uh, played a factor. How has it been uh, dealing with the elements so far? Well, you know, whenever whenever we're dealt with the weather, it's something we can't control. So, you know, we always tell the kids, you know, try to make an advantage of Hopkinton, meaning nobody around has a facility like we do. We're very fortunate. So to have the ability to at least come inside and use this entire field house, you know, we just make the most of it. And the kids have been working hard and, and making, like I said, making the most of it. Um, we've been outside a few times at Fruit Street on the uh, on the turf soccer fields, just uh, getting de defensive reps. But, uh, you know, again, we're fortunate to have the facility we do. So when the weather, when the weather finally clears, we'll get out there. But until then, the kids are working hard and that's all we can really ask for. Now, uh, good looking squad this year, at least according to what I saw in the practice. Uh, what do you think about this team this year? I'm very excited, very excited for this season. Um, the, the energy and the enthusiasm among the kids is as high as I've really ever seen it. I've been here 16 years and I don't know if I've seen a group of kids that, you know, has been coming with more of a chip on their shoulder and ready to kind of kind of get after it. Um, we have a lot of new faces. We only have two everyday starters back. Um, so a lot of kids looking to kind of prove what they can do for the team and kind of prove that, that you know, Hopkinton is going to be, you know, hopefully a force to be reckoned with because, you know, the kids are, the kids are very hungry, which is great to see. Yeah, certainly will. And uh, Matt Tessina, he's back this year. Uh, I'm guessing he's 
going to be leading the way, especially as far as for the uh, offensive guys? Yeah, Matt's a, th a three-year starter. He's he's um, he started every game as a sophomore. He started every game last year. Um, he's going to be playing in the infield this year. We're going to transition him back because he's been an infielder his whole life, but we've played him in the outfield the last two years just out of necessity. But you know, he's been working out in the infield with Milford Legion. You know, of course, they've had great success the last two summers. So he's going to work back in the infield yet. We're still sorting out who's going to be where. But um, but yeah, he's going to be a tremendous player for us, like he has been. And getting back to the weather, how has it affected things? Has it really slowed them down, or you still kind of on the pace that you want to be? I know obviously your outside access has been limited. Well, we're actually, you know, obviously you can you can get more of a realistic view of not only what where, where we at as a team, where we're at as a team, but where kids are individually. Um, it's obviously you'd rather see that in a on a field than a basketball court. But in terms of installing what we need to do, as far as you know first and third defense and bunt defense and first and third offense, things like that. We've actually had so much time inside that like we're on our third week now that we've actually installed almost everything that we want to. And the kids have an understanding of what to do. Obviously, that needs to translate onto an actual baseball field, which that'll come in due time. But, um, but you know, if there's been one positive from being stuck inside so much is that we've had a ton of practice time. And so the kids have really kind of soaked up what we're trying to do, which is important because we have a lot of kids up from the JVs that haven't played at the varsity level yet. So they're kind of learning how it's going to go. And they've been doing a really good job so far. Terrific. Now the season was pushed back a couple of weeks and you mentioned like the softball team, you guys are going to be opening up over at the Medway turf fields as yeah. uh, many teams are in the Hockamock. Uh, how do, does the schedule changes affect you guys at all, or do you just kind of go with the flow? No, we go with the flow. You know, we don't make the schedule. We don't have any control over it. But when they tell us to be somewhere, we'll just go and play. It's kind of like the Belichick thing. You know, right. he always just says, "Just give me the schedule, and you know, we'll, we'll go play." And so, um, I kind of think of when you know, Pat's play Thursday night game after a Sunday. It's just it's what the schedule says. So if the schedule says we're going to midfield April 10th, that's what we're going to prepare for. Um, and again, that goes back to. Controlling what we can control, you know, we can't control the weather. We don't make the schedule, but you know, we make the most of what we do have. We play the play the hammer dealt, I guess, so to speak. But uh, you know, the kids have been really taking that mindset on, and it's been good so far. Oh, <laughs> and I and I see you got your uh, yeah, the general, manager, right general manager over Scott here. Mackin, yeah, he's our uh, Ben Charrington. He calls the shots from behind the scenes. All right, Scott, we don't say anything. No. Hopkinton Hillers baseball kicks off the season on Friday, April 10th and their first home game will be Monday, April 27th against Ashland. After a long winter, spring is here, which means we are close to town meeting, the town election, the spring sports season, and many community events. For more information about the wide array of programs coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., the ladies from Hopkinton Coffee Break discuss the marathon and other local events. Our very first marathon. So it wasn't as, it, it has changed over the years, but 17 years ago you came down and of course the town is mobbed mm -hmm. and you've got the barriers to the roadway but literally after the last runner crossed the start, within a half hour, all the garb that all the runners had thrown off right. picked up, all the barriers down. It was like aliens was landed and were gone. On Sunday, April 19th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from April 13th will air. On Monday, April 20th at 7 p.m., hear the original works of audience members on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. What did I know of short, or slow, or dull? Not mine, these faults, ever left far behind. Locked in a past I chose to unremember. I only looked ahead to new rooms I could enter. At 9.30 p.m., Elizabeth Lund honors National Poetry Month by looking back on recent guests on poetic lines. On Tuesday, April 21st at 7 p.m., learn about Hopkinton's mill workers who lived at the turn of the century on the latest HCAM News Focus. Would you or someone you know like to be added to the HCAM Insider newsletter mailing list? If so, all you have to do is send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. 
email me at news at hkm.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and have a fantastic Patriots Day weekend. smile.